on weather underground. Heavy downpours continuing to drench the south. We're going to break down this on. And we thank you so much for joining us here on Weather Underground. I'm Mike Bettis. I'm Alex Wilson. Hard to believe Harvey was five years ago. Uh, that was an incredibly heavy rainfall, uh, rainfall event. And we've already this week yeah. seen two major rainfall events not tropically right. induced. It's hard to believe it's been 30 years yeah. since Hurricane Andrew, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, end of August can be very, very active when yep. it comes to the tropics. We've been very fortunate to be, to be quiet of late, but a couple of areas that we're certainly keeping an eye on. Yeah, we've got one area coming off the coast of Africa, another one around the Windward Islands. Uh, Dr. Nab breaking it down, saying both of these worth watching here in yeah. the days to come. Absolutely. And then again, I mentioned closer to home, it, it did not take tropical systems, bringing us huge rainfall totals. Yet again, we're talking about communities absolutely swamped. Yesterday, it was the state of Mississippi. These numbers are insane in some places here we've picked up more than a foot of rain yeah. i mean there's no doubt you're going to have flooding with those kind of issues it's storming again today it's probably going to storm again tomorrow we're just going to shift the rain a little bit farther east yeah we are staying very unsettled in these areas and the kind of rainfall that we saw the last few days spent the last two days in hard hit brandon mississippi just to the east of jackson he's there again today a lot of homes took on water for many of these uh, residents it was the first time they'd ever flooded here's justin with more we're going to shift to next for yeah. some of the heaviest of the rain. But I think a place like a Montgomery or Birmingham, you're worried in Atlanta or Columbia, South Carolina, not as big a risk for you as we've had in previous days in other places. Yeah, you know, we've seen the rainfall rates going down. While you oh, have goodness. seen some off and on rain, it hasn't been the torrential rain. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so we will take that. And we've certainly uh, been welcoming those changes. Now, uh, expecting some changes here in the Atlantic Basin. Of course, we are getting ever so close to the peak of the season, coming around the 9th, 10th of September. So here now, as we approach, what, one week away from the start of September, we're seeing things perk up a little bit, waking up. We've got two areas to watch. Neither of these areas looks to bring us imminent development, but as we look a little farther out in the longer range, say four or five days, things could become a little bit more conducive for development. So there's our first area off the coast of Africa. Another one right now currently bringing showers and thunderstorms to portions of the Windward Islands. That's going to get a little bit more favorable for development here as we see this move into parts of Central and Western Caribbean. You can see some of that drier air. That's the orange shading or that um, that rust color and then of course all the moisture so dry air has been causing a bit of a problem for some of these waves and including this one you know getting some interaction there with the dry air dry air working into these tropical systems not going to do us any favors for development it is going to do us a favor though in terms of keeping them away so again you like to see the dry air working with it if you are rooting against tropical development 20 percent chance of development within five days again i think as we get a little farther out in the period this is slowly continuing to move off towards the west i think we could see a little better chance of some development here as we move into the central western parts of the caribbean we'll watch the shear but i do think the dry air uh, conditions become more favorable for development there's that development area again getting over towards parts of Central America, even closer to the Yucatan Peninsula. Here's the European model. We watch that area of spin. Here it is continuing to work over towards the Yucatan by next week, middle of next week. You can see a little bit more of an enhancement, a little more defined area of spin. And again, you watch anything that gets into the Western Caribbean and especially the Gulf as we get into this time of year. When we look at the moisture aloft, of course, still some of that dry air, but a little less uh, beginning to work into this part of the Caribbean. Now, when we look at the shear, the enhanced satellite picture, again, you can still see some shear here over into the eastern Atlantic, a little less as we get off to the west. So again, I think if this thing continues to skirt off towards the south over the windward, we're going to get into an area where shear becomes uh, more hospitable for development. Then we're going to watch opportunities then. Of time to be out and about. And again, we need the rain in these areas. Love to get it without the severe stuff. Severe thunderstorms also possible today back into parts of Montana, Wyoming, even into the western parts of South Dakota. So we look at the Rapid City area. You can see there are two distinct areas, uh, one towards Great Falls and then the other back into the Rapid City area. This would be where conditions would be more favorable for the storms that offer up the gusty damaging winds, the hail, even an isolated tornado risk. So this afternoon, we've got some of those storms in addition to the severe threats, bringing very heavy rain here across parts of northeastern Wyoming into West 
western South Dakota. And again, our thunderstorms get going across parts of western and central Montana as we move towards the mid and late afternoon hours through the evening as well. Overnight, that area back into Montana likely to dissipate, but we keep some heavy rain, some storms going into parts of western South Dakota, including around the Rapid City area into the very early morning hours of your Friday. So don't be surprised if you're still hearing thunder, if you're still hearing that rain come down heavily during the very early morning hours. And you can see that continues to work off towards the north and east for the morning drive. So places around the Mobridge area, but especially south, some of that interstate traffic could be slowed down. Closer look at the Rapid City area as we move through this afternoon. You can see best chances arrive during the dinnertime hours and evening. So I think Rapid City, it's going to be later in the evening and then overnight that brings your highest chance of storms and heavy rain. Mike? All right, thank you, Alex. Let's see. A lesson for all of us, right, that even though maybe we've never experienced it in the time we've been there, it can happen. For some of us, it's just a matter of time. It will happen. Right, absolutely. So, you know, watching this at home, think about what can I do around my own home? Do I have that flood insurance? If my community got that much rain, am I living near a body of do? water that could come to me? Oh, we thank you so much for staying with us here on Weather Underground. I'm Alex Wilson. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Bettis. For many Mississippians, Wednesday's flash flood event is going to be, unfortunately, a very costly one. We know that, and that goes along with the total of six major rainfall and flood events that we've seen in just the last 30 days from St. Louis to Eastern Kentucky, Illinois, Jackson, Mississippi, Death Valley, California, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, so roughly a month we have seen not just one or two notable mm. events, but six that were life changing for the people who live in these yes. communities. And uh, again, each and every one of these events we go to, we hear from people who said it's never rained that hard. My home's never flooded or, you know, people are caught off guard in their vehicles. And sadly, mm. that seems to be a trend that we follow. You know, when we look at an increase in heavy rain uh, events, you can see a lot of those are increasing across the Midwest and the Northeast, but everybody might is increasing. There's no spot in the country that's not seeing bigger rainfall events than we were just a few decades ago. We know, though, that right now parts of Mississippi still under a flooding. This comes after heavy downpour sweeping through the area, causing time to go down. Now, we've been taking a nice long break here in tropical activity, but things beginning to show some signs of life once again, and it makes sense. We're approaching the peak of the Atlantic season. That would come during that early to mid part of September, Labor Day weekend, just a little over a week away. And we've got two areas to watch. Both of these look to be not imminent threats, but rather something that could come into play a little bit farther down the road. So talking about within the next week as both of these move off towards the west. First area moving over portions of the Windward Island. So this is currently bringing us some rain showers, some thunderstorm activity. But again, we don't have that circulation. We don't have a tropical system. We just have some unsettled weather. As that area of spin gets into parts of the central and western Caribbean, less shear that it's going to be up against, and I think less dry air. So we could be looking at some more development down the road. Our area off the coast of Africa, you can see some shear to the north, some shear to the south, also some drier air. We've got some of that dust in place. So it, it's up against uh, some battles currently, but as it moves off to the west, I think things turn a little bit more favorable there. But that first wave, again, 20% chance of development in the next five days. The area of development would be farther out in that five-day forecast. And again, more in line with the central and western Caribbean. Obviously, water temperatures very favorable there. So something we'll be watching here in those storms. We need the rain. You don't want to get it with the severe stuff, but uh, some of these areas are saying, hey, we will take the rain. So storm chances are not. We just need some wet weather. Right now, it's pretty quiet across much of the region. Obviously, the heat focused into parts of the tri-state area, New York, nearing 90 degrees. We've got lower 80s from Syracuse to State College, also Portland into Boston. A few showers up into sections of New England right now, but tomorrow really brings more activity and, again, brings that opportunity for some severe weather. Gusty winds, hail and also heavy rain possible out of these storms. Eastern New York, parts of Connecticut into Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and a little bit of southern Maine. That's our best chance area, but really anywhere through uh, eastern New York and New England could be looking at some stronger storms. So we start things up at midnight tonight with a little activity into portions of central New York, but you can see those storms really get going as we get towards the late morning and lunchtime hours of our Friday. So at this point, we've got that line of storms rip rolling through parts of Vermont, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. So with that line uh, definition of 
of the thunderstorms, gusty damaging winds will be the main threat. I think we're likely to see this focused line of thunderstorms offering up those winds that could take down trees, lead to power outages. And you can see 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right as we head into that late day drive, we're looking at parts of the I-95 corridor, including sections uh, like Portland, Maine, down to Boston, into Rhode Island and Connecticut, back towards Long Island. So a lot of populated areas, a lot of popular areas, people heading out to the Hamptons uh, for once again a weekend out there at the beaches. Your travel might be affected by some of these thunderstorms. I think even at 7 o'clock, perhaps the second round of storms working through, say, southern Connecticut, that 95 quarter there, and into sections of New England. So again, uh, a lot of threats on the table, Mike, but I would be most concerned about the winds that could take down trees and power lines. Sure. Alex, thank you. Uh, severe weather across portions of the mountains uh, into the Intermountain West. We're talking Montana, Wyoming, even into parts of the High Plains up there into western South Dakota. We can already see some activity bubbling up. You can see the little swirlies here in the atmosphere. So these disturbances help to fuel some of that air lifting and, of course, our severe weather development. Hail, gusty, damaging winds, both on the table out of today's storms. We've got two areas to watch. So we saw those uh, two spins. You can see the one there, uh, one out to the west. So we've got the area around Great Falls, Montana, right over towards very close to the Idaho state line. And then we've got that secondary zone into parts of northeast Wyoming, into southeastern parts of Montana and extreme western portions of the state of South Dakota. But this does include the Rapid City area. So as we move through the afternoon, we've already got some activity here in Wyoming. Things really perking up as we move towards the late afternoon and early evening hours. Across parts of Montana, I think it's late afternoon, really dinner time that we begin to see the thunderstorms firing up there. So Great Falls could be active for you around 8 o'clock. You can see some of those thunderstorms beginning to make their way towards Rapid City as we move towards the late evening. So hail a possibility into the later evening hours across western South Dakota. And while our one area, our western area, begins to die down a bit into the early morning hours, we're going to keep things fairly active across western and uh, north central South Dakota early on Friday. You can see 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Rain still coming down in Rapid City, headed up towards the Mobridge area by early on Friday. So uh, closer to that little low, we've got that uh, area of, of um, shower and thunderstorm activity that remains intact during the overnight hours. Here's your future radar for Rapid City. You can see some shower chances this afternoon, but things really get more active for you as we move closer to the evening hours. So here's 9, 10 o'clock with some rounds of thunderstorms. And again, and very likely that we're looking at more of the heavy rain chances into the late evening and overnight. Early next week, a cold front moving southeast. That's going to help to bring more storms into parts of the Midwest. Well, the National Park Service 